In this session, we're going to talk about underground conduit or pipe that is buried. This is often the best way to route cabling between buildings. It's kind of tricky to design and it's easy to make mistakes, which will make the conduits hard to use. So some common mistakes that we see are there's not enough pipes. They, we don't bury enough pipes. We dig a trench and we only put one pipe in when we should have put four. Sometimes we find that uh, the pipes that we've placed, the conduit is too small. So, you know, it's 50 millimeters rather than 100 millimeters. And uh, an another really common mistake I've seen people make is too many bends between the places where you can get a hold of a piece of cable to pull. Because remember, we're going to, we lay these pipes and then we come in later and pull a uh, cable in them. I will guarantee you if you have 360 degrees worth of bend, and that's pretty easy. You know, you uh, go down the street and you turn 90 and you turn 90 to go up a sidewalk and you turn 90 to get to the building and then you turn 90 to get uh, up to the second floor. Well, guess what? You have 360 degrees of bend and it's going to be impossible to pull cable through there without having an intermediate pull point, a place where you can get a hold of the cable and pull on it. And we'll look at that a little bit. Some additional rules here no more than 200 meters between pull points. So every 200 meters you need to have, if your pipe has just been buried in the ground in a straight fashion, you need to have a hand hole or a vault. Uh, those are the two words uh, that mean the same uh, in the US. A hand hole or a vault every 200 meters. We're gonna reduce that distance, that 200 meter distance, by 50 meters for every 90 degrees of bend, right? So that means if you have four 90 degrees of bend, like in my previous example, you can only have zero meters of, of pipe, which is exactly the right answer. You don't never want to do 360 degrees of bend. Never under any circumstances exceed 270 degrees without a pull point. So the way you do this is you survey the site, you spend a lot of time walking around, looking at it, uh, then you'll do the layout and you'll figure out where you're going to place your hand holes or your vaults. Again, bigger conduit is better than little. Uh, we always recommend at least one uh, 100 millimeter or two 50 millimeter conduits that's to each building. And I, we will point out that conduit for fiber optic cable is different than water pipe. And we'll, we will look at that really carefully. We want uh, whoever does the civil works uh, when they're doing the digging to install a pull rope in all the conduits, including empty ones. And we ought to label the conduits and we'll, we'll uh, talk about that here in a second. So as you plan this, get a map of your campus. Now, if, you're, if you don't have a really accurate map of the, your campus, you can use Google Earth and just take a snapshot of the Google Earth image of your campus. You know, there's a pretty dang accurate map. You'll lay out the conduit paths on this map, plan for where your vaults are going to be, and don't forget to think about future expansions. So if you know your campus is going to build some more buildings, we'll make sure that your underground conduits uh, are sized and, and you have enough of them uh, so that you can serve those buildings as well. So here's a, a small piece of the University of Oregon campus that building in the lower left, computing. Uh, that's where I have had my office starting in 1977. And uh, so that was obviously a core location for our campus. And, you know, again, if you don't have this nice, really pretty PDF map, you can easily take the Google Earth image. This is a Google Earth image of exactly the same pieces of the campus. And then you kind of decide where you're going to lay it out. And in this case, uh, this is just a straw man proposal of where I'm going to lay it out. Um, I'm going to come out of the computing building, uh, go up by some sidewalks, run alongside some sidewalks for a ways, and you know, kind of proceed my way on. Now, in this case, I know that there's a whole bunch of buildings below here uh, that you can't see, and so I'm going to plan my conduits appropriately for that. So again, this is the same thing on the Google Earth image, same image, same everything. So vaults, vaults are a way to reduce number of bends. The handhole provides a pull point, so you reset the 200 meter rule. And 
The other thing you can do is any place you might branch and go different directions, a vault is a good uh, thing to place. And think about future locations. If, you, if you're running by a place where you know uh, the, camp, the master plan for your campus says that there's going to be a building built there, we'll put a vault there, even if you don't need it because of the 200 meter rule. Um, that gives you a place to, uh, to pull cable and, and serve that building without having to do a whole bunch more digging. So in my example here, I've uh, called out some conduit counts and sizes, and I've showed you where I'm going to place vaults. You can see I start out with five 100 millimeter conduits. If I'm only pulling fiber cable to these few buildings that are being served, believe me, I don't need five conduits. Because a 100 millimeter conduit is about this big, you can fit, uh, you know, you can fit a dozen or, or 15 fiber cables in a, in a pipe that big. Again, this is mostly for the future. And uh, you can see I've run four 100 millimeter conduits all the way out to that vault just outside of Allen Hall. And that's going to be where I go to the downward direction to serve the rest of my campus. We've harped on and talked about hub and spoke configuration as being the most important design factor. And you, you look at this and you go, wait a minute, that's not hub and spoke. You're almost daisy chaining. That's true. You cannot afford to build your underground pipes in a hub and spoke configuration. Right? Underground conduit is installed in a very linear fashion. Notice again, this doesn't help with redundancy. In the case that we, we just looked at about designing the underground pipes, if you cut those pipes right by the computing building, our entire network is offline. So think about alternate paths and install two fiber cables to every building, one from each direction. But you don't have to start out that way. Redundancy is something you can consider after you've gotten your network installed and operational and people see the value in it. And then you can start to talk about hardening it and making it more resilient. 